let's have a look at one of the first commercial applications for fuel cell technologies, and that was the uh, Brunton Reactor, a portable hydrogen uh, fuel cell power generator. Looks like this. It's a handheld device into which one of the metal hydride cartridges uh, inserts. The metal hydride cartridge uh, delivers hydrogen to an internal fuel cell, which then produces power th on the USB output. These were initially rated um, at 5 volts and between 1 and 2 amps. However, despite all of their promise, they were a commercial failure and had a um, number of problems with power delivery. Let's put in the hydrogen cartridge and see what happens. When the cartridge is first screwed in, you hear a little pop of the hydrogen being delivered to the fuel cell. In a few moments, the red light will start blinking, indicating that the system is starting up. And then that will eventually turn, uh, start flashing red, eventually it will turn to blue. Right now, the hydrogen side of the fuel cell is empty. When you screw the cartridge in, the hydrogen is delivered to the inside of the fuel cell, and that voltage starts to increase till the CPU board turns on, then it opens the purge valve to purge out any potential residual air in the system and increase the uh, output power. So right now it's starting to blink red. There is the purge valve opening, and shortly it will turn uh, blue, and the fuel cell will start up. And there we go. Unfortunately, these things never, as I mentioned, never lived up to their hype. One of the reasons was low power delivery. So let's take a look at what it can actually do with this USB power tester. So you can see that with power off, it's delivering around 4.9 volts, a little low for USB. When you turn it on, even at current draws as low as 0.27 amps, the voltage uh, starts to sag and going to around 0.3 amps, it now goes so low that the low voltage cutout on the tester uh, shuts down. It's going, it's getting basically close to uh, under four amps. So, what went wrong with the with this design? Well, one of the reasons is that this is passively supplied with oxygen on the air side. It relies on oxygen diffusing in and the resulting water uh, vapor, the moisture of the uh, oxygen uh, reacting with the hydrogen, diffusing out. So let's take a look at this. Now we see the voltage is sagging and it's cutting in and out. Let's blow on this a bit. still seems a little low, let's take that to 0.25 amp. It's also a little position sensitive, so if you turn it sideways the voltage reduces. It also seems to have some startup delay. Well, let's go down to 0.15 amps. Okay, so it's pretty, it's really lagging at this point. Let's reset it. There's a reset button on the top which should purge out the fuel cell.
and that's just having problems. So in the meantime, while it's thinking, let's look at what went wrong with this design. Here is another one of the Brunton reactors, which I have dismantled. So the hydrogen cartridge screws into a regulator, which delivers hydrogen gas to the uh, middle of uh, two fuel cells are actually in this module. So opening up the electrode, the fuel cell has one conductive porous collector, then the gas permeable uh, membrane, which has the proton exchange membrane on the inside and a conductive carbon containing fabric on both sides. This was potted into the fuel cell module assembly and then there's the hydrogen electrode on this side. So the regulator is connected here and that just blows hydrogen between the two fuel cells. The hydrogen then just has to is then diffuses through this conductive fabric through the proton exchange membrane where it generates that voltage difference and then combines the oxygen that's diffusing through this electrode. It then has a compression plate which is screwed on to give a rigid mechanical backing. Uh, the problem with this is that so many of these holes were obstructed that the oxygen reactant just can't get in at a high enough rate to produce a reasonable amount of output power. So this uh, has li this limited the voltage on this these fuel cells by quite a significant amount. compared to designs where there was actually air, where there would actually be air being blown across the electrodes to supply oxygen to the oxygen side of the reaction. And as you can see, this is just severely drooping with pretty much any voltage. Um, though once this gets going, Ah, there. There we go. Um, if you would, sometimes if you blow on this, the voltage does come back up, and that's just because you're blowing in that oxygen and helping the reaction rate. So, the main reason this was, I think, a failure is just you couldn't get enough oxygen to the fuel cell.